In this video, we'll graph the truncus function y equals 1 divided by x minus 2 squared plus 1. So because it's already in the form, we can already state the transformations that's, that has occurred to this graph. So the first transformation is that it's been translated two units in the positive x direction. And that's because if we have a look at the denominator, we've got x minus 2 all squared. So we take the zero of that bracket, we get x is equal to positive 2 which is going to be the equation of the vertical asymptote. So here we have the dotted line representing the asymptote at x equals 2. And then the second translation is one unit in the positive y direction, which comes from the plus 1 term to the right of the fraction. So that means that our horizontal asymptote has been translated up one unit, and that's y equals one. So the next thing we need to do is find any x and y intercepts that occur for this graph. So the y intercepts occur when x is equal to zero. So if we sub that in, we have y is equal to one divided by zero minus two squared plus one. So that gives 1 divided by, so minus 2 squared is positive 4 plus 1, which comes out to be 5 over 4, or 1.25. So we have our y-intercept occurs at 0, 0,5 on 4, which is this point somewhere around here. So next we need to look for any x-intercepts. And we know the x-intercepts occur when y is equal to 0. So when we do this, we have 0 is equal to 1 divided by x minus 2 all squared plus 1. So when we're solving for this, we just need to use our algebra skills. So we subtract 1 from both sides. And we find that negative 1 is equal to 1 divided by x minus 2 all squared. Now, multiplying both sides by x minus 2 all squared, we have negative x minus 2 all squared is equal to 1. And now, I'm going to skip a few steps, but if you expand out this bracket and collect all the terms on the left-hand side, so you have a quadratic equal to 0, which we looked at in section 4 is how we solve a quadratic equation, we end up with x squared plus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. And now if we look at the discriminant, so if we look at delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac, we find that delta is equal to 4 squared, so b squared minus 4 times 1 times 5, and that's equal to 16 subtract 20, which is negative 4. So because delta is less than zero, so delta is less than zero implies there's no solutions, which means there's no x-intercepts. So to complete our graph, all we need to do is draw a positive truncus through here so that the function approaches those asymptotes but never quite reaches them. So now that we've graphed the function, we can look at the domain and range. So the domain is all the x values allowed inside the function. So to find this, we just need to scan along our graph and look for any x values that are not a value of the function. So in this case, the only x value that can't be in the function is x equals 2, which is where the asymptote occurs down here. So we can say the domain is equal to the real number set, excluding the value of 2. The range is all the y values that come out of our function. So if we scan through our graph, we can see that the minimum value starts just above 1. So we use the round bracket to say that we start at 1 not included, and that it goes off to positive infinity on the graph. So our range is 1 to infinity. So on here, we've just got a computer to graph this a little bit neater for us. Over here, we've just got our maximal domain and range restated as we found on the previous slide.